Hey, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be removing Preston studs and installing screw and studs in small block Chevy heads. Sometimes when you have an aftermarket cam or use stiffer valve springs, the OEM stock press-in rocker studs will start to pull out. Now, of course, you can drill and pin them, but from my experience, the next downside is they may bend or break. So, removing the press-in style studs and then tapping them and using screw-in style studs that are stronger is a better option in my opinion. Of course, having the heads machined by a machine shop is an even better option, but this is more, more of a budget-friendly solution. So here's what I got. I bought the new rocker studs from Speedway Motors. By the way, they got a new decal. I kind of like the old one better myself, but eh. Anyways, I bought two sets. Not that I need two sets. There's 16 studs to each set, so you only need one set to do a pair of cylinder heads. But they were cheap enough, I figured I might as well get a few extra. Now these studs are 3 8 in the top and 7 16 in the bottom. I also got this tool from um, Summit Racing. It's supposed to help remove them and I think start the threads. There's no instructions or anything. And by the way, I will include all the part numbers in the description. Basically, I think the tool is use this pin to guide it, or you can use another stud, just slide it over the stud. And there's a thread section, which I think is to help start the tap. I don't know. There's, Like I said, there's no instructions, so we'll, we'll figure it out. It seems simple enough. Oh, and you can get this tool, not Summer Brand, but Speedway, with a set of rocker studs from them. You know, the tool and stud is a set. Various other places have this exact tool, just different colors, like anodized gold or whatever. It's basically the same thing. Simple enough. Then I got these taps. I got a plug tap and a bottom tap. I decided not to get a starting taper tap because I have the tool. So we'll see if that works out for me or not. For the nuts, because the stock style rocket nut is a jam nut, I'm going to use these rod nuts that shouldn't add any extra effort to removing the studs. The same thread, just a little smaller. One of the examples to remove the studs was I read about was to use these rocker pivot balls. Stack them up and add as you need when you're pulling the stud. I'll demonstrate that later as well as using the tool. Here's a new stud versus an old stud. The old stud looks longer, but I think because of this oil line right here, once it's installed, the new stud may actually be just a little bit longer. You know, we'll see. I've already been practicing on this 882 head, trying the different methods I've read about. And one of them was to use a washer on top. But if, I, if you do do that, I suggest you use a washer that has a large enough ID that it isn't a snug fit or you're going to end up with a washer stuck on your stud, like I did. Also, another quick tip. Don't run the nut all the way down or you're going to gack up the threads and get stuck on like here. So you might want to have a few extra nuts because you're probably going to screw up a few or wear out one or two like I have. Before I forget, I'm going to use thread locker, blue insensitive, sorry, surface insensitive because there might be a little bit of oil on the threads if the heads aren't perfectly clean. You definitely want to lock those suckers in there. Well, that's what I got. Let's head over to the workshop and get started on this. Everything's all set up. Now the head I'm going to be using is a Vortex cylinder head. It's an older head, so I don't really care too much about it. I mean, because I should mention, there's always the possibility of damaging the stud guide boss when pulling the studs. 
And that's why I'm doing this step before I do a little bit of bowl blending on these heads. But they are old and used, so I don't really care if I, if I mess them up. And of course, there's the possibility of having crooked stat studs by doing this yourself. And if they're a little off, I'll live with it. I plan on replacing these heads eventually anyway. This is more of just a interesting experiment. So I've always heard about this, but I've never actually done it myself. I'll be using the air gun. You can do this manually. I don't plan on trying it, but I, I've seen people do it. And yeah, I got the air gun, I'm going to use it. I want to try a few helpers if needed. Some penetrating oil kind of makes sense to me, and I've heard map gas will help as well because supposedly the Vortec heads are a tighter fit on their studs and a little harder to pull than the older 882 or older castings. So we'll see. Okay, I'll set up. Put my hearing protection on. Now I'm going to be trying, well, demonstrating the pivot balls first. I've already tried this method. Basically, you just want to drop two on there, however you want. Throw a nut on. And you're going to run that down. Oh, sorry, mosquito. You're going to run that nut down, but not all the way. Just some to get a little bit of thread exposed. And then you're going to pull the nut up, back the nut off, and add another pivot ball. Here we go. So far, they seem to be pulling about just the same as the 82s. Maybe even a tad easier. Of course, I did soak these heads. Last little bit's coming hard. Uh, these studs might be a little bit longer. Let's back that up at another pivot ball. Yep, I gacked those threads up. It's a good thing I have extra nuts. That's up top. Whew. She's warm. I don't really care if I gack it up more because it's going to be replaced. So, I'll go dug her away. First one. Yeah, four pivot balls. I think I only used three in those 882s. Okay. So I'll just pull right off. And she is warm. Definitely. Let's move on to the next one with the penetrating oil. Maybe I didn't start with three. I, I don't remember. It was the other day. We'll start with three. And here we go. Gack it up again. Okay, 
check the position of the camera. Let's try the tool. I don't think that penetrating oil really helped. Spacing might be a little off, but we'll do the same way. Yeah, I don't think the tool is really going to be a lot better, but you know, we'll try it. I'm going to use a washer because I don't want to mess the tool up. Itself, you still got to use a pivot ball. Otherwise, you're going to gag the threads. Get out of there. It's still warm. Jacked another one. Yeah. Yeah, the tool for removal is not not working out so good. I'll just use the pivot balls. I'm not going to bother using the tool for removal. Oh, look at that. It's actually stuck on there. I'll get that out later. Okay, one last thing to try. Let's put some heat on this sucker. See, that makes it just a little bit easier. Come on. That should be good enough. She's smoking. Well, so that's it. The heat maybe made it a little easier, but I don't think the penetrating fluid really helped much. Definitely the tool 
didn't work great for removal. I'm going to have to go press that out, hammer it out, whatever, before I can tap this. So, be right back. And we're back. By the way, if you're going to use map gas, heat, you want to do it in a nice open area. I smoked myself out and had to let the room air out a little bit. Now I got that stud out, just took a quick whack with the dead blow. And it appears we have a problem. Earlier I test fit it and it wasn't going over the stud because of the threads. So I wasn't sure. But I know that small block Chevy heads, the stud spacing is a little different sometimes. Like I know the Corvette aluminum heads it's different, bow tie heads it's different. And it appears Vortec heads, it is also different. So this tool, once I drop it on there, I'm not going to be able to show you because it's just hard to see, but I can clearly see it. It is just off. I mean, I would have to maybe oblong this hole, and then I'd have to oblong it just enough to keep it centered, which is, you know, this is a steel, so it wouldn't be fun, but it would be possible. It just makes this tool pretty much completely useless. You can't use it to remove the studs, and I can't use it to tap these heads. I mean, it's a good thing I bought a plug tap. If I had a taper tap, it would have tried to start, and then I'd be really messed up. So, I'm not sure if they make a tool for Vortec heads. I might modify it, but I'm not leaning towards that. I think I'm going to have to hand tap these. So, let me go do some um, research and we'll try again in a little while. Okay, so I did some reading on the tool and I should have read the reviews because right in the reviews of the Summit tool it says this tool does not work on Vortec heads. The spacing is wrong. So, oops. Plus, I also found out they do not make a Vortex specific version of this tool. So, oh well. Like I mentioned earlier, I could probably oblong the hole. Or another option would be to chuck up the pin in my drill, because it just fits a half inch drill. And then turn it down on my grinder, you know, to the pin size. But getting that consistent would be kind of a, eh. So, I don't really like that idea either, and plus I don't want to really alter the tool in case in the future I want to use it on some correct heads. So, this is what I came up with. Take the tool and a 11 32nd drill bit, one wrap of uh, electrical tape, so it's just one wrap, not overlapped. Drops in there, lines it up perfect. Now, some people's electro tape may be a little bit thicker. You may have to try a different tape, but this is what works for me. You might have to use you know, maybe a different increment of drill bit, but this is going to work. I mean, I could just hold it freehand. But I like the idea of having the drill bit to help help me keep it lined up. It's one less thing to worry about. And since I got that figured out, then I decided to pull all the rest of the studs on both heads. And that's where I ran into my next problem. The last stud broke. Well, first it stripped out. Then I welded the nut on, and then it broke. The reason I welded the nut on is because several of the last studs, when they got towards the end, they just twisted the rest of the way. So I was hoping it would do the same. But it didn't. It broke. <laughs> so now I can either cut it off flush, maybe drive it through into the cooling port, or cut it off flush, maybe drill it out, but a chance of oblonging the hole and I don't really want to do that. 
and it has already started to pull somewhat. You can see this is where the stud would be originally, and now it's up to about there. So, about halfway pulled. So, here's what I think I'm going to do, or try. I took a stud, cut the end off, just the threaded part, chamfered it a bit, and once I level this off, I weld that on there and try and pull it the rest of the way. Of course, once I weld it, the pivot balls won't fit over the weld, they just barely fit on there. So to get past that, I'm going to cut off a section of this 3 quarter inch tube and then pull it like before. So hopefully that works. Oh, and by the way, I did order a taper tap. So now I have the full set, tapered, plug, and bottom tap. This tap is just a one I got local. It's a three flute. It's a plug tap. They said it was a taper. It kind of looked like a taper, so I bought it, but it's not. No. Taper has more starting threads. These ones are all four flute, so it looks a little bit different. That's why it was kind of deceiving a little bit. Plus, I didn't take the old tap with me, so. Lesson learned. Now hopefully I can get the rest of that stud out, and then we can get back to tapping these suckers. Okay, I got the stud out. Of course, it didn't come out easy. Stripped out again, and I had to cut the tip off and weld another tip on, but it's out. And now we can finally move on to the tapping part. Just give me a set here. I'm going to demonstrate tapping just one of the studs, and then I'll do the rest. Of course, I want to mention these holes are through holes. One under the cool port and one under the runner. So you don't have to worry about blowing the chips out as long as you knock the corrosion out of the bottom. They'll just fall right on through. I'm going to be using the tool to tap this in my fabricated pin, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I'm going to start with the taper tap. I'm going to go ahead and throw it into my block. Just enough. Set the block on here. Drop my pin in. Yeah, right there. That's just going to help me line it up better. I mean, it's still not, you know, it's still a little wobbly, but you just, it's just, it's just a guide. It takes a little more out of it. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. You don't have to do this part, but I like to do this when I'm tapping. Take a chamfer bit and just chamfer the top of the hole to help start the tap. Just a little bit. Okay, got the pin in there. And I'm going to high speed this part later because you don't need to see me tap the whole thing, but here we go. Taper tap. Now when tapping cast iron, you can tap cast iron dry because it has graphite in it. Only time I've seen them use lubricant on cast iron machining is when you're doing like you know a high speed tooling like your mass production. Now you're gonna see me turn about a half a turn and then back up. Half a turn back up to break the chip and go another half a turn and then back up and so on. You don't have to go too far with the taper tap. Just enough to start the threads. That'll be good enough. 
that slide around because this table's a little slick from all the oil and other shavings on it. And there we go. Let's give it a quick blast with the air. Now we're going to go to the plug tap. Now, I've already done a few of these, and from what I can tell, because these are so so deep, because they're not cut down for guy plates, you don't really need a bottom tap. You can just use the taper and the plug tap, and that's good enough. Half a turn, back it up. Okay, that should be about good enough for the depth. Just to give you an idea here, if I can get this sucker out. We're about that deep. You can see the threads. Let's go ahead and back it out. And one, one other quick note, for starting at least, I like to use a small tap handle, but they do make larger tap handles. You get a little more leverage on them, though I don't really need it for this right here. It would make the job a little bit easier, but I definitely recommend using a small handle for starting it. That way you're not going to get, you know, it's easier to get it centered, I believe. Shot of air. And that's good. So, let me finish up the rest of these and I'll show you my end results and give you my opinion on this method. Well, what do you guys think? Straight enough? You be the judge. Maybe not machine shot perfect, but looks good enough to me. Still, in the end, these are just 3 8 studs. Not as stiff as 7 16 studs. And they're for self aligning rockers, which are not as good as guide plates. Any serious performance application, you want to use a better setup, like guy plates and thicker studs, or even shaft rockers. That's why they don't offer many 7 16 self aligning rockers. But for a moderate street DIY project, these are good enough. I don't think it turned out too bad. I would do it again for a mild project. But for the Jegs crate engine I bought, it's also Vortec heads. I'll be dropping those heads off at a machine shop and getting the machine for guy plates. I'll let them tap the studs, you know, pretty much almost perfectly straight. So, thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Peace out.